ever brought a box home from work? You're barely two steps in the door before the questions hit you. What's in the box? There's something magical about an unopened box. There's mystery, there's potential, there's new things to explore. With the 2013 line of infrastructure design suites, you'll find all of this and more, all in one simple box. Welcome to our presentation today. Visualize your success with Autodesk VIM for Infrastructure Solutions. Hi, I'm James Wedding, an Autodesk Solutions Engineer, and in the next 20 minutes, we're going to talk about three important things. First, what changes are in store for the Autodesk Infrastructure Design Suite in the 2013 release? Second, how working with a suite of products can change the way you approach your production and open up new possibilities for your design team and for your business. And finally, we'll discuss some new functionality that has been added to the products that make up the 2013 Infrastructure Design Suite. We've got a bright, shiny, unopened box full of potential sitting here. So let's open it up and see what's inside. With the 2013 release of the Infrastructure Design Suites, Autodesk is opening up new possibilities within every project you take on. We know that detailed design is only one part of the job. And with the suites, you have access to tools that will help you every step of the way. Having a collection of Autodesk's professional grade products at your disposal lets you take advantage of the best tool for the job, whether that's planning, managing, designing, visualizing, or coordinating. And at every step of the way, there's more opportunity in that box. The Infrastructure Design Suite Standard Edition extends the AutoCAD Toolbox to include tools for foundational GIS, planning, design, and coordination capabilities. The Standard Infrastructure Design Suite includes AutoCAD, AutoCAD Map 3D, Navisworks Simulate, Storm and Sanitary Design, and now Raster Design. You'll be able to work with a full host of legacy data and manage your existing systems like never before. The Infrastructure Design Suite Premium Edition is built to take full advantage of BIM for Civil Infrastructure, adding in powerful conceptual planning tools, the full civil engineering design package, and high-end visualization to make your projects look as beautiful as the design behind them. The premium suite includes all of the tools in the standard design suite and adds in AutoCAD Civil 3D, 3ds Max Design, and new for 2013 editions, we're adding in the Autodesk Infrastructure Modeler. The Premium Suite lets you go from napkin sketch to construction document and stunning presentations, all with a family of tools designed to work together, just like your team does. The Ultimate Infrastructure Design Suite takes design to the next level, with tools for advanced utility and civil design. Built to take advantage of the skill set in the cross-discipline teams today, the Ultimate Edition includes all of the tools in the Premium Suite, as well as Navisworks Manage, and new for 2013, also includes AutoCAD Utility Design and Revit Structure. Navisworks Manage lets you really push into virtual construction management and AutoCAD Utility Design let your team take advantage of the specialty tools for electrical and other distribution networks. Revit tools round out the Ultimate Edition, letting your team channel their inner architect and work with the structures, such as bridges, that are often part of a major infrastructure project. 
there's so many options and so much potential in the infrastructure design suite. We've talked about what's in each of the design suite boxes, and I hope you're excited about the possibilities. So let's keep digging and explore some of the new additions to the suite and explore how all of these products work together. As we look at the products, note that we'll be looking at the context of a couple of different projects. One, an airport access road, and two, in the context of a master planned community. The power of a great set of tools is they can be used to solve a real myriad of problems. At the beginning of a project, understanding the existing conditions is just part of good due diligence. With the tools in the standard infrastructure design suite, managing existing assets and their future development is the nature of the process. No project is an island, and that means that you probably have existing plans in a file drawer or perhaps image files of existing projects that would be helpful in developing an understanding of your current conditions. With Autodesk Raster Design 2012, you can work with raster imagery easier than ever. Images can be inserted to real-world coordinates, rotated and stretched to match line work that describes a site, perhaps tying to the CAD line work based on meets and bounds. You can incorporate planning sketches or digitize something like a napkin sketch to turn it into part of the digital design process. With Autodesk Raster Design 2013, the suites open up all kinds of new options for data acquisition. With my site digitized, I can now use AutoCAD Map to take full advantage of GIS data, such as aerial imagery or shape files or geodatabases. The Map task pane makes working with multiple layers of GIS information easy, and advanced styling tools allow you to make sense of what can sometimes be an overwhelming array of information. AutoCAD Map gives you access to data in dozens of common file formats like rasters, shapefiles, or databases, and inserting GIS data from the local governing body will help you as a planner better understand your project before you start moving into it. Jumping over to our land development project, I am going to use a raster surface file, a DEM, to create a base surface, and then drape a combination of GIS data, pencil sketches, and some previously prepared land use exhibits onto that surface. Bringing all of this data together in a single exhibit really can help stakeholders understand what issues are in play. In AutoCAD Map 3D 2013, Autodesk has really focused on data access and planning, public review tools, data management, and modeling. Data access has been improved to include the ability to build industry standard models on a SQL server and an enhanced FDO provider for SQL servers. Dynamic map elements make public review easier, as does native DWG publishing direct to the web. Data management tools have been expanded to convert more flat data to smart data and linear referencing systems have been incorporated to better reflect the way road, rail, and utility networks are handled. To me, the most exciting addition to the infrastructure design suite this year is the Infrastructure Modeler. Infrastructure Modeler combines the best of BIM and GIS, really opening up new possibilities for many firms. Infrastructure Modeler allows you to create 3D models based on existing GIS data, adding depth and information to complex scenarios, making it easy to understand. Infrastructure Modeler can use raster imagery to create 3D terrain models, giving non-technical users an understanding of scenes that contour lines just don't deliver. With the style and theming tools in Infrastructure Modeler, you can easily color various land use scenarios to create compelling exhibits or add in the existing buildings based on the GIS information you used earlier in MAP. Creating a model like this really gives a common understanding to how your project will come together. 
Infrastructure Modeler also includes powerful proposal management, allowing you to create a base model and then add new proposals to explore different design scenarios. In this case, we'll look at a couple of different ways to get our road into the airport. To create those different proposals, we'll use some of the unique create tools found directly inside of Infrastructure Modeler, such as this one that allows us to create building masses by simply picking and clicking, tracing an aerial image to create a building shell that works for our visualization purposes. Infrastructure Modeler also includes powerful road and rail layout tools, such as you see here. Picking directly on the screen drapes a new road on the surface where you can use different styles, such as two-lane or four-lane, to simulate and explore your design. You can see the simple grips we used to convert a simple land road into a bridge so we actually pass directly over the rail line. Now, this isn't engineering grade design, but it's perfect for exploring the design and really opening the possibilities involved with the project. And when you're ready to finalize or compare, we've got tools that make that simple also. With one scenario complete, I'll start creating some camera angles, some points of view, so that I can show how this design comes together and how the approach road works in the context of the larger project scope. By setting common angles and setting up still shots, we can use those same camera angles to compare different design iterations. In this case, we'll set up a few different static shots looking at the approach road as well as the interaction with that rail line. With two different proposals modeled in Autodesk Infrastructure Modeler, I've exported out some simple images. In 2013, we've created the, added in the ability to add high reg output file formats, the sort of thing you could use to create posters for a public meeting, for instance. Here you can see we've got the images stacked up so that we can alternate between different design proposals, giving a very clear understanding of how we can pull this project together but still giving stakeholders an understanding of the options that are available through their design. In addition to the stills that we created based on static cameras, it's important to note that using the show motion tool directly inside of Autodesk Infrastructure Modeler, you can create powerful flyby effects that you can then export for publishing to say a website or even showing up on YouTube. And just in case the output directly from Infrastructure Modeler doesn't fit your needs, we also have included the ability to export to an FBX file, a file format that 3ds Max can use to really create stunning visualization. Now let's take a look at our master plan community in Infrastructure Modeler. We've brought in the map data that we created earlier. You can see there the surface, new roads, driveways, land use information, my houses, new houses, all of that data can be used to drive the model. Infrastructure Modeler also includes the ability to create style rules to help us create a little bit more realism in the Infrastructure Modeler. Instead of having just simple gray, uh, essentially plastic houses, we can create rules that help define and stylize the houses, applying skins to the building, giving the roof some texture, and really making the model pop. We've added in some light poles to add just a little bit more realism here so that as people review the model, they actually know what they're looking at. As you move into detailed design, one of the first things you'll probably do is go out and actually get some field survey data. With AutoCAD Civil 3D 2013, we can bring your real world, real world data into the full design package. With this release, survey functionality has been a real focus of the effort. Surveyors can more readily use attribute information and create more detailed base maps and utility plans from their field collected data. Prior to Civil 13, the data was stored, but not really available for presentation or for a query. With these new query tools, there can be thousands of items in a survey database that need to be sorted. 
And this functionality helps you filter the data in order to find these points, figures, and data properties faster. Additionally, you can now use those search results and add them directly to your surface, creating a dynamic updating link when new survey data is collected. For example, if you set up an edge of payment or an EP break line, every day when your crews come in and add new data to the survey database, that new database information is going to add to your civil 3D surface information, creating a more dynamic and more complete BIM model for civil infrastructure. It's important to remember that you're dealing with a suite of products here. With your survey complete, we can actually make use of the conceptual or proposals that we created with Autodesk Infrastructure Modeler. By connecting directly to the SQLite database that drives the infrastructure model, we can bring in those proposals. Civil 3D contains many of the map data connections that are part of the AutoCAD Map 3D product. Now, within Civil 3D, we can use best fit tools to create road layouts in both horizontal and vertical. And with the advanced modeling corridor toolset, changing a corridor to reflect a change in the cross section or a road width is pick and click simple. And for those of you who have really complex situations, the subassembly composer that again was on Autodesk Labs has been baked right into the AutoCAD Civil 3D product. So now there's no cross-section you can't handle directly with Civil 3D and the corridor tools. Let's take a look at a few other features that were added to Civil 3D for the 2013 release. Previously, there were no explicit tools for the railway designer. While all civil engineers could benefit from the power of Civil 3D objects such as surfaces or corridors, the geometric design requirements of a railway alignment simply couldn't be defined. Civil 3D now includes the idea of an alignment type, including special features for rail, like cord-based alignment design and labeling. The alignment also helps provide the necessary modeling information for CANT. And for those of you working below the surface, you'll be thrilled to see that Civil 3D 2013 introduces pressure networks, including a large out-of-the-box catalog of pipes, appurtenances, and fittings in a variety of materials and sizes. These intelligent 3D objects help enable you to create and document detailed pressure network models. Just because you're still working on your infrastructure design, does it mean that you shouldn't begin the coordination process with the rest of the project team? For that, the infrastructure design suite includes Autodesk Navisworks. Navisworks allows you to aggregate your DWG with the Architects RBT and bring them all together in a model where you can understand how the whole project is going to come together. In 2013, We've really focused on three key areas, simulation, integration, and communication. And for the advanced rendering capability that you're looking for, for really making those projects sing, sing the infrastructure design suite always includes 3DS Max Design, so you can take your civil 3D model using the civil view tools and create high-end stunning presentations. In the last little bit, we've taken a look at what's included in the infrastructure design suite and the various additions. We've looked at how these suites can work together to open up new opportunities for your project team and for your company. And we've looked at some of the new features that are going to be part of each application within the suites packages. I really appreciate you joining me. And to learn more, be sure to come visit me in the Infrastructure Solutions Center at this virtual event. Thanks again, and I hope to see you soon.